Choosing an astronomical telescope can seem like a daunting task, especially when there are hundreds of instruments on the market. I've come along to an astronomy shop in North Norfolk to help explain the differences. There are three types of telescopes. First, there's the refracting telescopes, and these use lenses to collect starlight. But because of the properties of glass, they'll have more than one lens inside, with the best quality telescopes having as many as three or four different lenses. Now, the longer focal length telescopes like this one are brilliant for planetary work, and the shorter ones are great for astronomical imaging of galaxies, star clusters, and nebulae. Then there's the reflecting telescope, which use mirrors instead of lenses. They're much cheaper to make than refractors, so you get more telescopes for your hard-earned cash. Makes them great for beginners. Now, because telescope mirrors are supported at the back, they can be made much larger than refractors. So with large mirrors to collect more light, they're brilliant for searching out faint deep sky objects. And finally, there are the telescopes which use lenses and mirrors. These are pretty good all-round telescopes and offer long focal lengths with a large aperture, but they can be a little bit expensive. When choosing a telescope, you'll see terms like the focal length, which is the distance it takes the lens or mirror to bring light to a focus, and that's effectively the distance between the mirror and the eyepiece. And then you'll see aperture, which is the diameter of the main lens or mirror. Now these terms are important for identifying the best telescope for you. A large aperture, for example, will collect more light than a smaller aperture. So if you're interested in looking at galaxies and nebulae, then a large aperture is the best telescope for collecting as much light as possible. Now, focal length is important as it's the major determining factor in magnification. Longer focal lengths allowing you to achieve a higher magnification, so a longer focal length is best for planetary observations. When you buy a telescope, you not only need to think about the telescope tube, but you also need to think about the mount that it sits on. One of the most important aspects to look for in a telescope mount is stability. A nice stable mount will give nice stable images that don't bounce around. There are two main types of telescope mounts. The more basic one is known as an altazimuth mount. This one can hold up to two telescopes. It's got two axes, a horizontal one and a vertical one, and the telescope moves easily and simply around both of them. Now this type of mount is fine if you want to do visual astronomy, but if you want to take photographs, you'll need an equatorial mount. An equatorial mount differs from the altazimuth mount because one of its axes is tilted so that it's parallel to the Earth's axis of rotation, and by fitting motors, it can be turned at the same speed that the Earth spins, but in the opposite direction to keep objects in the eyepiece. These mounts will need to be polar aligned before they will be able to follow objects across the sky. The rotation of objects as they arc across the sky is also counteracted in equatorial mounts, making them the perfect choice for astronomical imaging. You'll also see equatorial and altazimuth mounts that are fitted with computerised controllers. These are referred to as go-to telescopes because after a few simple setup steps, they can point to any objects in the sky for you at the touch of a button. Before you rush out and buy your first telescope, it's well worth popping along to your local astronomy society because they'll invariably have loads of different telescopes that you can try before you make your first purchase. <laughs>